Ms. Bixby's Last Day by John David Anderson. There are six kinds of teachers in the world, the zombies, the zuzzers, the dungeon masters, the Spielbergs, the noobs, and the good ones. Miss Bixby was a good one. When Miss Bixby falls ill and needs to be hospitalized before attending her own last day party, Topher, Steve, and Bran set off on a risky, chaotic, and exciting adventure to give her the best last day possible. The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill Every year the people of the Protectorate must sacrifice their youngest baby to the witch in the woods. Every year Zan, the kind witch, wonders why the Protectorate would abandon a baby in the woods. Every year Zan rescues the baby and brings it to be raised in a town across the wood. One particular year, Zan meets the newest offering, Luna, and accidentally feeds her moonlight, enmagicking the child and setting off a chain of events that will change the entire world as they know it. Soar by Joan Bauer Baseball is life for Jeremiah Lopper, even though a serious health issue keeps him off the field. When a scandal rocks the high school team with devastating consequences, can Jeremiah's can-do spirit bring baseball back to this heartbroken community? Lucky Strikes by Louis Bayard When 14-year-old Melia's mother dies, resourceful Melia, a clever mechanic, is determined to run the family auto repair shop and gas station, care for her little brother and sister, survive the tough days of the Depression in rural Virginia, and stave off standard oil shill Harley Blevins, who has an eye on Melia's business. All she needs is an adult to pass as her father. When a hobo rolls out of a passing truck, Melia grabs opportunity by its beard. The Wild Robot by Peter Brown When Robot Roz opens her eyes for the first time, she discovers that she is alone on a remote wild island. After a misstep on a craggy ledge, Roz assumes the role of mother to a baby gosling and begins to learn about love, life and death, and community, until the day Roz's mysterious past comes back to haunt her. Unbound by Anne E. Berg Stealing children, making them work till they bones as weak as jelly, binding their thoughts and words, forcing them to flee and kill snakes and eat lizards is wrong. There's nobody ever can blame us for wanting to be free. The In-Between by Marina Cohen Do not let the innocuous cover fool you. The In-Between is not for the faint of heart. On a cross-country trip to say goodbye to her best friend, Quinn ends up at the In-Between, an elegant and eerie Victorian hotel in the desert where people mysteriously disappear, and she catches glimpses of her long-lost sister through distant windows. The Drawing Lesson by Mark Crilly Read this comic and start drawing today. No, really, read this comic and start drawing today. Follow along with David as he takes lessons from Becky, his reluctant teacher. For some reason, Becky isn't thrilled when her quick lesson to a kid in the park turns into 8 a.m. wake-up calls and daily visits from David. But he is tenacious, and he shows talent. Nothing But Trouble by Jacqueline Davies When Lena moves to town, outrageous things start happening. Oda Oaxaca Middle School is filled with purple puffs of smoke, parachuting mice, and clues for a perilous scavenger hunt. For the first time in Maggie's life, Oda M feels like a place where anything could happen. Until the new principal cracks down. Maggie and Lena have to decide if it's time to play it safe, or for the real trouble to begin. It Ain't So Awful, Falafel by Feruza Dumas Like most girls in the late 70s, newly renamed Cindy dreams of joining the Girl Scouts, making friends, having a beanbag chair, and fitting in. When Cindy's given name Zamorad Yusuf Zada, home country Iran, makes headlines with protests, revolution, and finally the taking of American hostages, Zamora despairs of finding a place where she belongs. Some Kind of Courage by Dan Gemenhardt Joseph Johnson has lost just about everyone he's ever loved. The theft and sale of his beloved horse Sarah is the last straw and sets Joseph on an unforgettable adventure through the 1870s wilderness of Washington State in hopes of being reunited with the only family he has left. The Inquisitor's Tale by Adam Gidwitz In 1242, a fascinating cast of characters come together by chance at an inn in France to recount the story of three magical children, 
their holy dog, and their many adventures, including the stinkiest dragon to ever terrorize the countryside. Project 1065 by Alan Gratz Infiltrate, befriend, sabotage. Michael O'Shaughnessy joined the Hitler Youth as a spy. When Friendship Followed Me Home by Paul Griffin Friendship is an absolutely beautiful, heart-expanding book. I cried, but more than that, I felt this giant balloon of love for everyone. This story convinced me all over again that love and imagination are life's biggest magic. It'll make you want to grab hold of everyone important to you and lick them on the nose, said Rebecca Stead, author of the Newbery Award winner, When You Reach Me. May Day by Karen Harrington Wayne Kovac's life split into two worlds, before and after. Before, Wayne was a fact-spewing nerd dating the prettiest girl in school, annoyed by his dad, intimidated by his grandpa, and worried about his uncle. After, Wayne's uncle is killed overseas. After, he and his mother survive a plane crash on the way back from his funeral. After, Wayne loses his voice. Without the ability to speak, how can Wayne find his place in this new world? Be prepared to learn many, many, many useless yet fascinating facts that you never knew you wanted to know. A Bandit's Tale by Deborah Hopkinson I arrived from Italy in March of 1887 and was put to work by my padrone as a street musician, begging for pennies. Then the boys of Bandit's Roost found me, and I discovered a much more profitable way of getting a dollar a day. Am I a poor boy whose parents sold him to a villain? Or am I a scoundrel who deserves every bad turn that has come his way? Well, you'll have to decide that for yourself. The Land of Forgotten Girls by Aaron and Trotta Kelly Once upon a time, Soledad had two sisters and two loving parents. Now she has one sister and an abusive stepmother, and there are five things Soledad knows to be true. What happened to Amelia was her fault. Evil V will never be her mother, ever. Manny is a good friend, maybe even the best. She'll do anything to protect her little sister Ming. Louisiana is not the same as the Philippines, not even close. Beautiful Blue World by Suzanne LaFleur Twelve-year-old Matilda volunteers to fight for her country at war, a war where even kindness can be a weapon, and children have the power to see what adults cannot. The Poet's Dog by Patricia McLaughlin Soon after Teddy the Irish Wolfhound's poet companion passes away, he meets two lost children in a snowstorm. It's a good thing that two kinds of people can hear Teddy speak, poets and children. The Seventh Wish by Kate Messner One day, while ice fishing, Charlie catches a fish which offers to grant her a wish in exchange for its freedom. As Charlie's wishes go amusingly wrong, and a family crisis with her older sister rears its head, she begins to wonder if some things are just too important to leave up to wishes. Wish by Barbara O'Connor A bird singing in the rain, that's a wish. Blowing on an eyelash, that's a wish too. Cutting off the pointed end of the pie and saving it for your last bite, that's also a wish. Charlie Reese should know she's been making the same secret wish every day since fourth grade. Sent to live with her aunt and uncle, it looks like Charlie's wish will never come true, until she meets the skinny stray dog Wishbone and her surprising neighbor Howard. Now Charlie is in serious danger of discovering that what she wanted may not be what she needs. Lost in the Pacific, 1942 by Todd Olson on October 21, 1942, a B-17 bomber carrying eight men crashed into the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Eight men, three inflatable rafts, 68 million square miles of ocean. What will it take to make it back alive? Ghost by Jason Reynolds Castle Cranshaw, a.k.a. Ghost, is a runner, but never for a track team. When Ghost impulsively challenges an elite sprinter to a race and wins, the impressed coach offers him a spot on the team with one condition. If Ghost can stop getting into fights at middle school, he can run for the defenders. The Evil Wizard Smallbone by Delia Sherman I am the Evil Wizard Smallbone. 
I know spells of binding and release, transformation and stasis, finding and losing. I learn them by experiment and example and luck, but most of all, I learn them from books. And you'll never learn a single thing I don't choose to teach you because you can't read. You knocked on the door and you asked for shelter. Well, you got it, and now Evil Wizard Smallbone has got you. Falling Over Sideways by Jordan Sonnenblick Harassed at her middle school, not taken seriously at home, and with a perfect older brother, Matthew, to live up to, 13-year-old Claire has always felt like her life was cursed. Then one morning, when she and her father are talking at breakfast, he suddenly keels over, and everything changes. The Bitter Side of Sweet by Tara Sullivan When Amadou and Sadu left their family in Mali to find work, they never imagined they'd end up as forced labor on a cocoa plantation in the Ivory Coast, but that's exactly what has happened. Their will to escape grows weaker each day until Khadija arrives and reminds them of the one thing that truly counts. Some Writer, The Story of E.B. White by Melissa Sweet Salutations! This is a biography like you've never seen before about the iconic children's book author of Charlotte's Web and Stuart Little. Children can sail easily over the fence that separates reality from make-believe. A fence that can throw a librarian is nothing to a child, said E.B. White. Save Me a Seat by Sarah Weeks and Gita Varadarajan Joe's lived in the same town all his life and was doing just fine until his best friends moved away and left him on his own. Ravi's family just moved to America from India, and he's finding it pretty hard to figure out where he fits in. Joe and Ravi might be from very different places, but they're both stuck in the same place, school. The Littlest Bigfoot by Jennifer Weiner. Lonely 12-year-old Alice wants nothing more than she wants a friend. She just doesn't expect her very first friend in her entire life to be a Bigfoot. Wolf Hollow by Lauren Wolk. The year I turned 12, I learned how to lie. The year I turned 12, I learned that what I said and what I did mattered. My steady life began to spin, not only because of the war that had drawn the whole world into a screaming brawl, but also because of the dark-hearted girl who came to our hills and changed everything.